Greetings, Structure Pros. Okay, so this time we're going to be doing an example on combined loading. So we're given this cantilevered beam that's also a pressure vessel with this 5 kilonewton force pushing down or pulling down at D. We're given that the inside radius of this vessel is 225 millimeters, the pressure inside it is 1.2 MPa, and the thickness is 6 millimeters. We're asked to find the maximum normal stress and maximum in-plane shear stress at point A. So sometimes it's a challenge just to know how to start a question, but let's just start by taking a cross section at A and drawing the effects that this 5 kN force has on a cross section at A, and then specifically we can draw the element and pull that out as well too. So here's the element. We know from the pressure vessel equations that we have a hoop stress going around the circumferential stress it's sometimes called. That's sigma 1, so that's going to be in this direction on the right face of the element. Sigma 2 is the longitudinal stress due to the pressure inside the vessel. And then we also have a shear stress as a result of this 5 kilonewtons offset by 500 millimeters. So the torque that results is what gives us this shear stress along our front face. And then finally we have this bending stress drawn in red. I'll just call that sigma b. So that's the bending stress due to the 5 kN force acting 750 millimeters from the section at A. We know this bending stress provides tension on the top. That's why we've drawn a tensile stress coming out of the element. We can visualize that, you know, the moment 5 kN pulling away from the top and pushing down at the bottom as it acts. So let's start solving for some of these stresses that we have. So for the thin walled pressure vessel stresses in black, sigma 1 we know is PR over T, or 1.2 MPa times 225 millimeters divided by 6 millimeters, the wall thickness. As usual, we can just verify that R over T is greater than 10. For us, we have 37.5, so it's definitely a thin wall. That means that the sigma 1 is 45 MPa, or 37.5 times the pressure in the vessel. Okay, so sigma 2 is just half of that, we know from our equations, so that's 22.5 MPa, the longitudinal stress. Next, let's deal with this torque, which gives this shear stress tau, which is equal to Tc over J. So the C that we're solving for is the distance from the center of the section to the outside fiber, or the point at A. So that's 225 plus the wall thickness of 6. So TC over J ends up being 5,000 times 500, that's our T, times 231, our C, and then divided by J. And J we just have to solve for for the section. For a circular section, it's half pi r to the 4, and we're just going to subtract the inside radius from the outside radius, both to the power of 4. We can plug that all into our calculators. We end up with 5.775 over 4.469 or 1 1.29 MPa. So that's our shear stress. Next we'll move to our bending stress, or sigma b we called it. And that's mc over i, the common flexural equation there. The C is the same as for the torque, and the M in this case is has a different moment arm, the 750 millimeters. I is slightly adjusted from J as well. It's one quarter uh, of the uh, radius to the 4 times pi, rather than one half. So solving for this in a similar way, we get 8.663 divided by 2.235, and that gives a value of 3.88 MPa. So now that we've solved all our stresses, we're going to draw them out, and we do have a plane stress condition looking down vertically at the element with a hoop stress of 45 MPa, so that's acting on its own on that face. Then our longitudinal stress is acting with the bending stress, so we'll add those two together to figure out their effect. So that's 3.88 plus 22.5, or 26.38. And then finally we have our shear stress, 1.29 MPa. So we can draw all three of these stresses 
on our element. And now we're ready to move forward with our Mohr's circle calculations to find this maximum normal stress and maximum in-plane shear stress. So a new page, I've drawn the element again. So sigma average is the average of these two normal stresses, 35.69 MPa. And then R, since we do have a shear stress, the calculation is a little bit involved. It's the difference of the two divided by two squared plus tau xy squared, 45 minus 26.38 over two squared plus 1.29 squared, all square rooted, a lot of math, 9.4 MPa. Sigma max we know is the average plus R, just like the sigma min is the average minus R. So for our maximum normal stress, we have 45.1 MPa, and we know that our maximum in-plane shear stress is just equal to R, or 9.4 MPa. Again, if you need a refresher on this Mohr circle and these equations, just go back, there's several videos on that, and take your time with that. But we've done a, we've done a bunch now, and we're just kind of used to just using these equations, getting the average and the R, and being pretty quick with it. Okay, let's just plot it, just for our knowledge here. Drawn this, uh, the Mohr circle axes, the sigma on the horizontal and the tau on the vertical. We can put in our max 45.1. I've solved for our min 23.6. Neither of those faces have shear, hence the zero on the other side. And then up at the top, tau max of 9.4 occurs when both faces have sigma average, in this case 35.7. Now here's the comment question of the day. What is the absolute maximum shear stress at A? So I'm not going to give you any hints. Comment if you figure it out, and I'll do my best to figure it out as well to confirm or deny. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned, you know, more examples. We love doing these things, structure pros. It's what we do all day, all night. Problems, problems, problems. Peace.